Laughing Out Loud, America's Funniest Comedians, featuring classic comedy performances by Chris Rock, Norm MacDonald, John Fox, Jeff Altman, Bruce Baum, Fonda Shear, Jason Alexander, and D.L. Hewlett. D.L. Next up, Jason Alexander. This is exciting! It means that somehow, somewhere, someone thinks that I have achieved at least semi-celebrity status, which is very nice. Thank you, Jason. And now, here's Rhonda Shear. Thank you. Woo. I'm glad you're in a good mood because I'm glad to be here. I had a very harrowing experience yesterday. I had to make that annual visit to the gynecologist. Ew. Actually, it wasn't so bad. My doctor was getting old. His handshakes. <laughs> That's why we spend the entire day there. Um, actually, half the day. The other half, we go to the mall. How, do, how many of you ladies like to shop? <laughs> Does this ever happen to you? Do you ever wake up in the morning, go to the closet, and hate everything in there, and then realize you spent the night out at someone else's house? <laughs> I like to shop. I was in this store and this girl grabs me at the cosmetic counter. I got very paranoid because she goes, you have to start using this cream. It's great when you start to lose your looks. This is like the one thing I wish they had a lost and found department for. See, guys don't have to worry when they start to lose their hair because they don't lose it. It starts growing into their scalp and out their nose. <laughs> then they just kind of comb it over and do that hair nose over the <laughs> It's very attractive. Um... <laughs> Oh, so anyway, I have this little spandex dress on because my boyfriend bought it for me. Guys like these little spandex dresses, don't they? They're about, they're about this big, you know. My boyfriend bought it. We went to a restaurant. I sat down. I got up to go to the bathroom. It was a belt. <laughs> Dinner was free that night, though. Uh, <laughs> my boyfriend's from, from New York, and I'm from New Orleans, so there was a major cultural difference between the two of us. So when we fight, I put on the southern accent. I said, honey, down south we have a saying. Men are like streetcars. Another one comes along every five minutes. He said, yeah, honey, in New York we have a saying. Women are like subways. You pay to get on and the whole ride. You live in fear. Oh, yeah. Sure, the guy's like that. <laughs> he slept with the dog that night, though. But I am from New Orleans, and I know you're thinking I didn't go to college, but I did, with this big blonde hair. You needed big blonde hair to get into the college that I went to. Uh, I, I didn't like school too much. I took some of those great courses like Lincoln, the man, and the car. Um, <laughs> but this is true. Before moving out to Los Angeles to seek fame and fortune, I was a former Miss Louisiana. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> and I went to the Miss America pageant, and I came out 49th. Well, I would have come out 50th, but Miss Iowa couldn't get her tractor started for the talent competition. <laughs> you think it's easy to be in those pageants? It's not. You know what they do? They send you a manual on how to win. I got written instructions on how to wave properly. Elbow, elbow, wrist, wrist. Elbow, elbow, wrist, wrist. My little brother found the instructions and almost went blind. <laughs> get to the interview portion of the pageant where they have the top 10 girls standing there. They actually asked Miss Arkansas to spell Mississippi. She said, why, is that the river or the site? <laughs> <laughs> then they get to Miss Texas. Those girls place every year. She goes, hi, I represent the Lone Star State. My name is Betty Lucille. I'm 22 and I am a virgin. <laughs> Sure, Betty, that's why your diaphragm flew out in the middle of your tap dance. <laughs> it was a darn good talent, though. She retrieved it. <laughs> they got to me. I couldn't take it seriously. I said, hi, my name is Rhonda. I'm from New Orleans, which is also known as the Big Easy, and I think all you judges can vouch for that. <laughs> so let me ask this question. By applause, how many people here are married? How many people by applause are single? Single people have 
so much hope. They always cheer. But you see, there's a lot of side benefits to marriage, like sex every night. Yeah. Yeah. And occasionally your partner will join in. <laughs> see, I'm single, but we go through a lot of things for you guys. Like, for instance, we go out and buy those silky little teddies. Are these things comfortable to sleep in, ladies? Yeah. You wake up in the middle of the night, that thing is strangling you like a noose around your neck. The panties have to be surgically removed. <laughs> And let's face it, in the middle of the day, we can look great, right? We can moose, we can quaff, we can hold over the end back. But in the middle of the night, we lose muscle control. What if he wakes up and catches us and our stomach is hanging over the edge of the bed? <laughs> then they call us up in the middle of the day and they want to talk sexy to us from work because they think we're running around that little silky teddy all day. You know, maybe we're doing something else. Maybe we're out in the backyard, we've got mud on our face and hands, the phones are ring. So like, babe, uh, what do you have on right now? <laughs> Oh, the usual way I water the garden, buck naked with a whip. <laughs> and why is it, you guys, when you take off your socks, you sniff them? <laughs> Not just one, but the other one, too? Like, is it gonna get better or something like fine wine? What's the deal here? And this makes me paranoid. After we make love, I look in the mirror. I look terrible. He looks fantastic. I figured out it's because my makeup is all over his face. I looked down, his nipples were winking at me. They were my eyelashes. I won't even tell you where my Lee Press on nails were. Uh, <laughs> just to get dressed after they know us. They don't do this on a first date. Because what does it take for you guys to get dressed? You walk past some deodorant. You jump into anything that's standing in the closet. It takes a long time to get this, you know, this messed up look. <laughs> I mean, my boyfriend's walking past the bathroom. He's going, come on, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. I go, you're making me nervous. I'm not going. I look like a dog. He said, I don't care. Just grab the water bowl. I've got the leash. Let's go. <laughs> The man isn't to working out. Uh, and see, I don't believe that. I just wear those tight spandex jeans because those things will just like hold everything up and in to unzip them, then out pops Orca, the killer whale then. <laughs> Actually, my jeans are kind of like some of the men that I dated. They're tight and they give me pain and suffering. <laughs> and they shrink in cold water. Uh, <laughs> can motivate yourselves to work out, can't you? Guys can do that. They can put on their little earphones and go jogging down the street. Women have to be motivated. Like, I like to go to the gym and get behind the hottest looking chick there. You know, the one who looks like she's using her leotard to floss. <laughs> <laughs> then I kind of meditate as I exercise. I hate this girl in front of me. I wish she'd fall and break her knee. Perfect breast and perfect butt. I know this chick's been liposucked. <laughs> Thank you, Rhonda. And now, here he comes, Bruce Baum. Oh, we got a barn burner tonight. How you doing? Hey, I got to tell you, what's all this business about all these postal workers going berserk? Jeez, went to the post office the other day. Half the wanted posters are their employees. One of them was employee of the month. These guys get depressed because I can't get promoted past the mail room. It's the only friggin' room there is. Oh, man. You know, a friend of mine told me that if I got an aquarium and I watched the fish, that could be very relaxing. And I did that. I noticed there's always one fish with one of those little poop things hanging down. And then the other fish tell him. When you got a friend with food on his face, you go, hey, pal. And none of these fish down there going, hey, Louie. And they're down by the castle going, hey, look, Louie's got one hanging and he's talking to Karen. Oh. Oh, you think it's embarrassing coming back to the table with toilet paper on your shoe? Try coming back while you're still dragging your business. You guys watch the Discovery Channel? I think the reason they call it the Discovery Channel is you watch it when you discover nothing else is on. Yesterday I watched two rhinos mate for an hour and a half. Now all my pets think it's the all-animal porno network. Ooh, you guys read that new Kinsey sex survey that just came out? They found out that 42% of all women need less than 15 minutes of foreplay to become aroused. 48% need more than 15 minutes. Conversely, 97% of all men only needed to hear the words, come and get it. Oh, oh. I don't know, is it me or does it seem that every time Michael Jackson gets a new body part, the less and less we see of Tito? <laughs> Have 
ever see these Shriner hats, these fezzes? I gotta figure thousands of years from now they dig up our civilization, they're gonna think these are giant nipple tassels from alien strippers, huh? No one's gonna believe we wore these on our heads. Oh man, I went to Victoria's Secret to get something for my wife. You guys been to a Victoria's Secret? Yeah. yeah, nice place. Sales lady came over and asked if she could help. I told her, no thanks, I'm just sniffing. <laughs> well, I was. <laughs> but I got her those musical panties. Have you seen those? Those are cool. Embarrassing in public is every time she crosses her legs, you hear a muffled version of Funky Cold Medina. <laughs> the speakers keep sliding out. <laughs> waka, waka, waka. <laughs> Anybody here get married in Las Vegas? Boy, isn't that a romantic town? There is nothing like hearing a minister say you may now kiss the bride. And you get one free lucky pull. <laughs> uh, my wife's pretty kinky. I just got her those magic fingers for our bed. She disconnected nine of them. <laughs> I'm watching a commercial the other day. At the end of the commercial it comes on, brought to you by the Chicken Advisory Board. What the hell do the chickens do that they need an advisory board? You got some guy in the pen going, I'm not telling you chickens, you gotta do this. Highly recommend it. Worst commercial by far. Have you seen the ones for disposable to pen diapers for adults? Have you seen the ones on cable? They got two guys on the golf course. One guy goes, Murray, I gotta go to the clubhouse and go to the bathroom. The other guy goes, Phil, I pinched a loaf on the 13th. I can't remember the fact that I was married. I gotta think thousands of years from now when they dig up our civilization, they're gonna find these things and go, wow, look at the size of the babies these people were birthing. Whoa. Uh, you guys keeping up on, you know, Joe Camel, the smoking camel for camel cigarettes, Joe Camel? Yeah, they just found a lump in his hump. And, uh, bad news is they had to remove the lump and the hump. And the good news is now he's got a great gig as a llama. There you go. I gotta tell you, I wanna give everybody a little water saving tip because you never know when we're gonna be in the middle of another drought. First of all, everybody's shower head is about this high. If you lower your shower head just to here, you save all that water from here to here the entire time that you're taking a shower. And that's just simple physics. Talk about bad luck today, I bought a box of Rice Krispies with Tourette syndrome. It goes snap, crackle, you suck and chuck and piece of crap, pop. Just got one of those new rear wipers for my car and it works great, but I'm telling you, you gotta sit just right. All right. Anybody ever belong to a frat or sorority or belong to one now? I never joined one. I'll tell you what, I went to about eight meetings. They were all exactly the same. Always some guy out front going, all right, welcome to our frat. Now, what does it mean to be in Sigma Nu? It means dignity and self-respect. And I hope you understand dignity and self-respect. To get into our frat, you gotta ride this moose around campus naked with a jock strap on your head singing Whip It. <laughs> I can't believe some of these uh, companies, they let merge in the products they make. You guys know the company that makes Clorox, also makes kitty litter and barbecue sauce? <laughs> you got the board sitting around one day going, you know, we already make bleach and kitty litter. Why the hell are we making barbecue sauce? <laughs> the guys bumping each other down in research. You just got bleach on the kitty litter. No, you got kitty litter on the bleach. Hey, put another shrimp on a Barbie. That's not too bad. We can, uh... By the way, oh! By the way, I've been doing some musical research, and I found out it was actually white people that came up with rap music. Only they call it square dancing. <laughs> you guys keeping up on this Jeffrey Dahmer character, a guy that ate 17 people? Whew. I can understand one or two, but 17, you're eating just to eat. <laughs> you guys see they found those heads rotting in the refrigerator? That shouldn't happen. Those go in the crisper. <laughs> and they found a jar of testicles in his apartment. Can you believe that? A jar of testicles? I was like, hey, what are you eating for breakfast? Uh, nothing, honey. <laughs> Bruce. And now, Jeff Altman. Without glasses, as you may know me, glasses tonight so I can read and let you know who's here with us. <laughs> hey, man, what's going on? How are you folks doing? Where are you guys from? Oh, that's great. You know, <laughs> ever notice when Oriental people get mad, they sound as if they're being electrocuted? 
Shh, 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 even if it's real low energy, it still sounds like low voltage, like <laughs> Main reason I'm 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 a little I'm a little unnerved tonight, a little strange. I'm missing my favorite show, Jeopardy. We have Jeopardy fans here tonight. Yeah. My favorite show. I, I I are you good? Well, yeah, I guess so. Sure. I can watch the show. I can watch the show for two weeks, not know one damn answer. I just, I'm very jealous of those guys that are the big winners. You know, the guys that come back week after week. You know, until you meet them, you're jealous until you meet. Them. Uh, my name is Floyd Gockler. I'm assistant librarian here at Wyoming State University. I enjoy reading and picking things off myself. <laughs> winners and uh, Alex Trebek can start to get you after a while he's just a little I just I see him looking at his cuffs all the time he just thinks he's a little too cute doesn't he you know Alex uh, and, and, and he loves he loves when you screw up he loves when somebody makes a mistake because he's got those little cards in his hand you know he can tell you what's wrong no I'm sorry Bob the capital of Yemen is Sinai <laughs> sure like he knew you take away the cards he's blank as a blackboard he's Chuck Woolery without the cards <laughs> My dad loves uh, Jeopardy. My dad was great. As my dad got older, you know, you can tell, dad's pants go one of two directions. As they get older, they either go like this. <laughs> uh, what's that, honey? You know, somebody left the cap off the cheese whiz. <laughs> Case of my dad, just the opposite. He started getting older, the pants started creeping up on him. Yeah. Up and up and up. By the time he was 65, it was just a belt and a head, you know? <laughs> I don't need this baloney, buddy boy. I'll flip you like a cheese omelet, pal. That's right. Thank you, Jeff. Next on stage, John Fox. Good night, guys. It's been great. Thanks, John. And now, here comes Norm McDonald. Oh, thanks. How are you guys doing? All right? The weirdest show I ever saw. ever see the dating game? That's a weirdest show. The prize on the dating game, another contestant. Talk about cheap, you know, to chuck you somebody else. And they always do the same thing on the dating game. They get a beautiful girl, match her up with three big geeks. You know? <laughs> Last week they had a guy, I was like a crazy guy, loony bin, psycho, wingnut, crazy guy. You can tell by the way they introduce him. You know, they go, bachelor number two is a shadowy lurking character. <laughs> From no fixed address, please welcome. Guy comes shambling into the studio, well thumb copy of Catcher in the Rye sticking out of his back pocket area. And then, they made the girls ask those questions. They always be laced with sexual innuendo, you know? Girl gotta go, bachelor number two, if I were a popsicle. <laughs> what would you do to me then? What? That's what it says in the card here, something about a popsicle. And then the guy goes, well, if you were a popsicle, huh? Well, first of all, I guess I'd uh, take your wrapper off. If you know what I mean, then I'd grab a hold of your sticks. If you know what I mean, then I'd press you against the counter till you're broken too. But put half you in the freezer till later. If you know what I mean. I, you understand what I'm getting at there? I, what a crazy guy that turned out to be. Ah, but everything's expensive, isn't it? <laughs> oh man, I wanted to buy this dog. You should have seen this dog. This guy wanted to sell me a dog in the store. It was six hundred dollars this dog? Can you believe it? Six hundred dollars for a dog? Oh man, I was looking to pay, you know, a, a buck. <laughs> I just wanted a bargain dog, a nice discount dog, a cheap, off-the-rack kind of dog, any kind of... Show me to your bin of dogs, my good man, I said to the guy. But this guy says, no, he says, he says why don't you buy this dog? He says, this, it's 600 bucks, this dog, but he says, this dog is a pit bull. He says, this dog will protect your valuables. You know? And I don't even have anything very valuable, you know. I, I buy the pit bull, 
That would be the most valuable thing I have. <laughs> I'd have to buy something to protect that then, you know? I'd be out shopping for wolverines the next day there. Show me something in a timber wolf if you could. No, you don't want a dog like that. I want a dog do things for me, you know? Fetch my slippers and things like that. You know, Pibble won't do that. I say, hey, Pibble, fetch my slippers. You know, Pibble will go, I could kill you, pal. <laughs> I'm a pit bull. Don't you read the papers or anything? I, I don't fetch slippers. I fetch people. That's all I I could fetch you a guy. That's the best I could do. Maybe be wearing some slippers. How about I bump a guy off around bedtime? How about that? So you go, all right, then. Fair enough. Boy, those dogs will kill you fast, too, man. Just, they rip your throat out. That's what Pitbull does. He goes, ha! Rips your throat out, and you die. And uh, you die before he hits you. Dog be in there, you go, I think I'll have a heart attack. <laughs> when I was a kid, it was a Doberman. That was a mean dog when I was a kid. And they'd rip your throat out, too, but they'd give you a little, you know, head start. <laughs> Doberman, see you on the street. Go, hey, your house over there? Go ahead. <laughs> So I, you don't even see Dobermans around anymore. You know that? Because pit bulls have all the work now. They're the big dog. Dobermans, once in a while, you see them on a street corner, you know? It's sad. On a park bench with a frisbee. I used to be somebody, hey. I'm a Doberman, hey. Got a buck? Buck for the Doberman here. Yeah, I, I don't get those crazy killer dogs. When I buy a dog, I always try to buy a dog that, you know, if he goes berserk, I can take him. I gotta, I like to be able to beat up my dog if I have to. I got a, I got a wiener dog, you know, I got one of those. You know, wiener dog can't rip your throat out, you know? Unless you're lying down, you know, that'd be about the only way. You'd have to be lying down sleeping and the wiener dog sneak up late at night, start nibbling at your throat there. Maybe by day brings out a hold of a vein, he's pulling out a vein there, you know. Well, you wake up, oh, get away from me, you wiener dog. What the hell, you think you're a pit bull there or something? You get, get my vein back there, that's my vein you got there. Worse than wiener dog, give him maybe a hickey, that's about all you got. And that's embarrassing, too. Hey, you have a hickey? People see you on the street go, hey, you got a wiener dog over there, huh? <laughs> okay, listen, that's the end, the end of my jokes, but thanks a lot, you've been great. See you later. Thank you, Thank you, Norm. And now, here's Paul Rodriguez. I'm a Mexican. Just like the kind that make you mad on the freeway. <laughs> and, and we understand the situation. Our cars only go 35 miles an hour. Yours would too if you had 40 Mexicans in the trunk. People get upset right there behind you. Beep, beep, damn it, move, move. We gotta go to work. We don't have no words to go to. <laughs> Which leads me into Reaganomics. Yeah, from the Chicano perspective, Mexicans, we like Ronald Reagan. We don't like his policies, but we can identify with his hairdo. <laughs> he goes it back with plenty of pomade. That's enough to get the Hispanic bold. So good man, Reaganomics. Ronald Reagan and his programs. I'd like to thank him, because I'm here under the CETA program for Hispanic comedians. <laughs> but you're sitting there wondering, how do you know that I'm a Mexican? Well, here's proof, tortillas. <laughs> for you, tortillas. Ladies and gentlemen, this is America. When I tell you I'm a Mexican, don't misunderstand me. I'm American. And it's great to be American, and so are all of you. Ethnic groups is what made America the unique nation in the world. Where else but in America could a Mexican girl date an Irish guy, drive a Japanese car to a Chinese restaurant, come back and be arrested by a black cop? <laughs> Only in America! And if 
you are gonna be arrested, do it in Los Angeles. Cause here the police are polite and courteous. When they pull you over, they say, please. Courteous, there's a black guy going, yeah? White people are going, well, we haven't had any problems in our neighborhoods. Sure, a few parking tickets here and there, it's quite understandable. But the police are courteous, because when they pull you over, they say, please, please pull over. Makes us feel like we got a choice. <laughs> like we can say, no, thank you, officer. <laughs> I don't have time to chit chat with you right now. <laughs> Cause I'm drunk. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always getting stopped. I was born a suspect. <laughs> no, I'm not lying. Here in Los Angeles, if your car's got primer spots, that's probable cause. <laughs> They'll pull you right over. Ah, oh, but it's all these things that are happening. See, when I, when I realize, and all of you should, how fortunate we are being in America, because you find unique combinations and situations in this country that I'm positive do not exist nowhere else in the world. Just today, I went to a Mexican restaurant in East LA run by a black family. <laughs> it's called Casa Yo Mama. <laughs> Free fried grits. Hey, how's that in? Hey, how you doing? Where's the TV cameras? Hey! Can you believe it? The magic of television? Here I am. I understand this show is going to Canada, which is the easiest border I ever cross. <laughs> yes, I'm international now, no? All right, I'll tell you what, there will be plenty of tortillas for those of you who laugh quite for no reason whatsoever. <laughs> Yeah, like everybody else, we Chicanos like to keep up with the times, but our parents won't give us any quarter to play Pac-Man. You're gonna put a quarter on something, it better be a washing machine. <laughs> That's what my mother said. But we like to keep up with the times. Here's what we do, we cut a tortilla like this, we got Chicano Pac-Man. Yum, 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 yum. <laughs> yes, yes, I'm a Mexican, but it could have happened to you. <laughs> He's going, what a horrible thought. <laughs> Sends chills up and down my unemployment check. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Cameraman, focus on me, please. Huh? No, don't badger these guys. They went to school for that. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm from East Los Angeles, and of course, you've heard the news. It's a violent place. There's a lot of good people there, but there's bad people everywhere, because that's the way things are. I don't know. But I used to be in the baddest gang of them all in East LA. I belong to the Warlords. Oh, yeah. I'll give your cameras back, OK? Yeah, and our arch enemies was a Jewish gang across the tracks. They were the landlords. <laughs> There's a Jewish person in the back, some Jewish people, don't be offended. My father is half Mexican, half Jewish. He's a migrant stockbroker. <laughs> and when we have Passover, we serve the Manichevis for everybody here. Hip joke, thank you very much. Huh? Well, I gotta tell you, this is my attire, these is my pants, and these are, we wear baggy pants, Caucasians always asking us. Why do you Chicanos wear such baggy clothes? <laughs> well, it facilitates shoplifting. <laughs> I can get a color TV set in this sucker right here. <laughs> of course, we can transfer life into other things. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of people here, especially in California, who defend different animals. Don't kill the whales, save the seals. But no one is talking about our best friends, las cucarachas. <laughs> You know why I admire cockroaches? Because they are survivors. After the Russians bomb us, we bomb them. Roaches shall inherit the earth. Because you can kill them. The thing I love about cockroaches is that they are so, they fit in, they blend in wherever they are. They take up the ethnicity of whoever's house they live in. The roaches in my apartment are Chicanos. You can tell, they walk across your living room. They're in gangs, Jack. They wear red bandanas. They write their names on your refrigerator. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
because all of that boils down to the point I'm trying to make is that here we are and we've got no choice but to get along. Because in every race, God put brilliant people and put stupid people and put pretty people and put ugly people. And ugliness is a statistic. <laughs> Look around, there's some here. How many people here are ugly and know it? I guess you want me to point you out, huh? <laughs> Statistics are that one out of every six people on earth is ugly. So look at the six people at your table now. <laughs> They're looking too, she's going, well, it's not me. <laughs> Thank you, have a good night. Thank you, Paul. And now here he comes, Chris Rock.